Hello, everybody. This is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation into glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited tonight to bring a guest on. She's an amazing woman of God, and we're going to have some glory stories for you, and we're going to minister some. So I'm just thankful for what God's going to do tonight. I got my amazing friend, Cindy Stewart, coming on. She's an itinerant minister. Hey, Jody, how are you? I'm going to give a few minutes for everybody to log on. If you're logging on, just share this. We want to be able to pray for people tonight and let the Holy Spirit have his way and be able to move. So if you're on here live, just tell me your name, tell me where you're from, what state you're from. Just give a few minutes for everybody to log in and then we're gonna dive in and talk about the glory. I'm so excited that these uh, Facebook Live people have spoke to me and just said how much it's really meant to them and touched them and how much they're learning. Hey Karen, how are you? Tell me what state you're from. Cindy should be just on in just a minute. I got Cindy Stewart coming on tonight. She's an amazing, powerful woman of God. And I am excited to, to share um, what the Holy Spirit's just put on our hearts tonight. I just really have an expectation. I just feel the glory, Lord. And I'm just excited to be able to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to just touch each one of your lives tonight. We were praying for you before we got on. And uh, Cindy will be here any second. And... Uh, that's a viewer, babe. And uh, it's just a second. Sorry, sometimes the screen likes to glitch, but we'll get rolling here in a minute. I'm just thankful for what God's going to do in your life. If you need uh, healing or miracle, um, if you need a, a healing or a miracle too, we're going to be calling out some words of knowledge probably towards the end. And if we don't cover it, you could always say, hey, I need prayer for this. So I'm just, just excited to... See, uh, Holy Spirit likes to meet us where we're at. You know, each one of you have a need, and we realize that, and we're just just honored to be able to serve you and uh, just talk about the glory. Basically, you know, God just put it on my heart to help everybody be able to understand what does it mean to be in the presence of God. Hey, Kelly, how are you? And your beautiful daughter, I haven't seen you in forever. I'm <laughs> just giving a few minutes for everybody to log on. We're just going to be talking about the presence of God. And uh, Cindy's coming on in just a second. So excited to see what God's going to do tonight. I hope each one of you ladies get touched. We're just <laughs> hey, Cindy! Hey, how are you? <laughs> Boy, that took a little bit of work. That's all right. I told everybody. Yeah, tonight. Sometimes it just happens with uh, electronics, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's so good. Okay, I'm going to take a minute and just share it so all my friends can catch it, yeah, too. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you're on here, just share, especially if you know somebody that needs to be touched. I'm just going to turn my volume up really quick, guys, and we'll get started here in a few minutes. But uh, if you're on here and you know somebody that needs to be touched by the Lord, share this broadcast. I was just saying hi to everybody and tell them I'm so excited to see what God's going to do tonight. And I'm so honored, Cindy, to have you on here. You author so many books. You have you're a coach. You're an itinerary minister. You and your husband lead the, the gathering worship center. You you carry multiple hats. <laughs> I do I do, and I love it. You know, some people are just meant to have a lot of plates juggling at the same time, and I definitely have a lot of plates juggling. And you're but anointed for it, right? <laughs> you're a powerful <laughs> woman of God. So I'm just thanking you for coming on and and sharing yeah. with us tonight, and 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 speaking to everybody and I'm giving a few more minutes before we dive in. People are still logging on. Uh, hey, Emily, how are you? 
just type me where you're from and uh then we're gonna dive into some questions for cindy and and just allow wow. the holy spirit to move absolutely how's the weather the weather there in florida beautiful yeah it's <laughs> about 85 and oh, rain. Nice. Every afternoon we have rain for about five minutes nice yeah so it's, it's beautiful I love, it may have I been love, 70 uh, here a little chilly a little chilly in the carolinas <laughs> i love the carolinas that's one of my favorite places i go to charlotte quite a bit okay yeah yeah we're in about two hours from charlotte. there jody's yeah. from virginia hey jody how are you Jody, glad to have you on here tonight. All right. Well, st some people are still logging on, but we'll go ahead and just get started. And uh, I'll just see what Holy Spirit does. Hey, Danielle, how are you? All right, Cindy. So I'm putting you right on the spot. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> so one of the things, if you've never been on live before, um, God just really put it on people's heart. Hey, there's my stepmom, Trina. How are you? Um, to teach people about the glory. Hey, Betsy, how are oh. you? And how everybody has access to the glory. And, and, and that's just really my heart, that we all have intimacy with the Father. We can all access that. And I always like to start with giving you two scriptures for you to study. Ezekiel 44.4, that the glory filled the temple and 1 Corinthians 3.16, that you are the temple. Now, the old temple, it, you are now, it's the body, it's your spirit, man. And um, so just tell me a little bit, Cindy, how you first experienced the glory of God. Gosh, you know, I was thinking about that earlier because I love the presence of God. And, you know, there's, it, John 17 says that the glory that the Father gave Jesus also he has given to us amen so literally we live in the glory of god amen the presence lives in us but we all know that's very different when it begins to manifest in a way where we can feel that weighty presence we can feel that shifting where everything that's natural is no longer even in our mind because the presence of god is so heavy amen. and I, I don't know that i know the very first time but i remember in you know, just really going after God and trying to find the more of him. I was at, we have a, like a prayer house uh, in our area. Awesome. And I was there and the weight of the presence fell so much. I I had to crawl along the floor to oh, try to get God. the prayer room. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand because you're thinking, well, why would God want to have us so immobilized? Mm -hmm. But it's so we can be saturated in his presence Amen. and know that real tangibility, that real touch of who he is on us Amen. so that we recognize when his move is starting to come. So it's, it's interesting that, you know, the God who is the God of everything wants us to experience the God of the, the weighty glory presence. Amen. Amen. What would you say to somebody on here that maybe they are like, Hmm, what does the presence feel like? I've heard people describe it like a hundred different ways. What does it feel like to you? Uh, <laughs> you, know, I think God, I, you know, I think the presence shifts all the time. Amen. Now, yeah. A lot of times when I'm ministering, I can, there are certain signs that God gives me that he's in the room, that Amen. he's going to do Amen. A lot of times uh, my last two fingers will start tingling. I know that healing's about to be released. So there's things like that. But uh, I, what does the presence feel like? It's just this knowing that, that God is, is here with us and everybody experiences it different. I mean, every time I think I have God figured out and how he's going to show up. <laughs> Preach it, girl. <laughs> yeah. There's a swirl in the front of the room and I'm like, I didn't see that coming. Amen. Amen. So it's very for everybody. Amen. I agree with you. So how did you learn to cultivate the presence of God? Uh, I cultivated it in the secret place. Amen. I don't think people realize the importance of really spending that time with God. Amen. And you know, we think, you know, I used to think, you know, you've got five whole minutes this morning and then I got to get to work, God. But I learned as he met me where I was, I learned that the more time I spend with him, the more I'm able to really move in a lot of, um, almost seamlessly with him. Amen. It takes knowing his word. It takes spending time 
practicing hearing his voice, talking to him, waiting. I think waiting is the hardest part for all of us. <laughs> when I, hey, God, what about this? I expect something pretty quick. Okay, yes, no, maybe. But that waiting Amen. and learning to just shift our perspective to allow him to speak to us. So, so the secret place is it, man. So the secret place. So if anybody, I have people from all walks of life on here. So if nobody's ever heard of the secret place, what would you, how would you practically spell that out for them? Well, the secret place for me is uh, my chair. Amen. In, in a room, in, uh, separated from everybody. I get up, but I'm just an early person, naturally. Some Praise people are God. like, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I get up to crack a dawn, and I spend a couple hours with God every morning. Amen. And then my other favorite place is uh, by the water, because we live near the beach. Oh, so. Wow. It's a couple minutes from my house. I'll go down there and just sit by the water. But it's it's the place where it's just you and him. Amen. Not being distracted by your cell phone or, or something else. When I when my kids were little, my secret place was the bathroom. Amen. <laughs> the door That's right. Like, Mom's in the bathroom, and so I could just sit and just pray and Get talk to God. Get downloads in the bathtub soaking. <laughs> yeah, he's flexible. It's just that place where we really pull away and just spend with him. Amen. So if there's anybody on here and, and you're listening to us talk about the secret place and you don't know Jesus and you're like, I've wanted to accept God. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm not quite sure. Just, just say, God, I want to know you. Jesus, come into my heart. I just want to know you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you resurrected. Teach me about this secret place that Cindy is talking about because I want to feel your presence for the first time. And don't you agree, Cindy, that, that over time, let's just say when you were a baby and you were learning how to go to your secret place, <laughs> in the beginning stages of the secret place, what gave you that fervency? Was there one thing you'd like to share maybe that God touched you in the secret place that just really made you continue to go there, continue to seek intimacy with the Father? I think really uh, one of the first things was I was so hungry to know him mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I did church for a long time and it was, it was a process. It was a program, a relationship. And I, I used to say, God, there's got to be more to you than this. Amen. And finally, one day I said, Lord, I need for you to show up. I mean, and when, mm -hmm. when I got so hungry and desperate and I just, I wasn't going to leave until I saw him and Aaron mm -hmm. came or felt him or something and that's when he just broke through on my behalf you know when I was just kind of playing around a little bit here a little bit there uh doing everything I was supposed to do but not <laughs> giving him the time I should but when I, I just got so desperate for him I wanted the realness of Jesus I that I for a long time but I you know, a lot of times people feel like uh, the tangibility going after the signs and the wonders and the healing, you know, is um, a waste of time. Mm. You need to be practical, go out and get people saved, that kind of stuff. But what I realized was that's what Jesus did. He got Amen. people healed. He got them delivered. He Amen. allowed them to touch him and encounter him. And really that, that one desperate cry of my heart is, I've got to have more of you. Amen. He was just Amen. like, yes. He has that yes for everybody. <laughs> he does. He's, He's like, no. Amen. That, that's one of the things that I just, I just love about you is your realness and your honesty and, and your ability to be able to communicate. The Lord's just told me that you have a grace for communication. And it's so awesome. I love it. And, <laughs> and so I just want, want the Lord to... Um, what's the word he's given me? Well, how, what would you challenge somebody on here that maybe in a loving way, because I know you have that mother nurturing in you too, <laughs> that maybe they're playing around with the secret place, but they're not really going after it. And I, I just feel like somebody's watching and they're kind of struggling. They need an answer. They need yeah. an answer. And maybe they're not, they're trying to um, learn how to hear the voice of God. Could you share any tips on maybe how to hear the voice of God? You know, one thing I've found is the most profound way is I will pick one scripture and, mm -hmm. and I meditate on it until I sense his presence. Then once I sense his presence, the scripture is not important anymore. Amen. That's good. Word opened the door for me to encounter him. Amen. I learned it from a book. It was written by Madame Guyon. Oh, I don't wow. know she was a 
back in the 1700s, I think it was. That's but, awesome. And, and uh, you know, the word brings Christ alive in us. Amen. Just take that one little scripture and I will just say it out loud and, and just say, Lord, just open that door for me. And really, Jesus will meet you in that scripture. Mm-hmm. Do that. What I found is when we lay aside all of the things that we want to talk to him about, and it doesn't mean we're not supposed to, because he said, ask me. So yeah. I ask for everything. <laughs> when we lay aside, oh, you should see, you should hear my conversations That's with him. So awesome. I'm like, hey, Jesus, what about this? Okay. Your word says this. So I want that, you know, yeah. but I found that when I lay aside that and just focus on the word and allow his presence to come, what happens is, he begins to bring revelation to me. Amen. I had no idea, uh, no awareness of. So he begins to open up the mysteries and the treasures and just things that are just way beyond our capacity. Because I'm not trying to get something from him. I'm just waiting to receive what he has on his heart. Amen. Amen. So would you say there's a resting that comes from knowing the Father? Yes, there is a rest. There, it, there is a, a peace that comes with it, where even in the bit, midst of the greatest chaos around you, Amen. there's something about leaning back and letting the Father carry the weight of whatever those pressures and troubles are. Amen. So even as you were talking, I felt the anointing to break shame. There's somebody on here, and you're really wanting to, to know the Father, and I can feel you pulling on the hunger. I can feel it in the room. So, Lord, we just come in agreement, and we just break the power of shame. Lord, I thank you. You're going back to the root of where their shame came in right now. If it's a decision that you regret, just repent. Just just come out of agreement with regret. Just say, I repent for doing this. I forgive myself. I command. We just take authority over that shame. We command it off of you. Off. Off right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we just say, Lord, fill them up. Fill them up. Fill them up with your love. Fill them up with your identity. Right now. I just I just see the Lord cutting off chains of shame right now. It's so awesome. So would you think that say some of the things that would really has to try to distract you with getting in the glory? Is there some battles that you fought? Is there just everyday yeah, you know, sometimes, I mean, in fact, even when you're praying for someone with shame, I felt like there are people listening that are just like, well, that's okay for them, but God's not going to me. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I don't have enough, whatever it is. And that, um, you know, that is just such a lie from the enemy. It's we just want to lie yeah. because yeah. He has called us all. You know, Ephesians 1 says that, Every spiritual blessing has been given to us from heaven. So we have everything from heaven that we need. Amen. And if God's opened up those doors of heaven for us, that means that we're more than worthy to step in. Amen. So I just release that worthiness over there because it sounds like, um, you know, that it's just too hard mm-hmm. to really be able to, to move into that place because of, like you said, the things that they've done. But, I know that there are people there that tonight we're Amen. just going to release that break that God will speak to you in your dreams. Amen. That you will wake up with an encounter and that there will be a real breakthrough in your ability to acknowledge and receive his presence. Amen. Uh, so that's good. Amen. That's good. So you tapped on dreams a little, a little bit. I'm, I, I'm a big dreamer. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, so share a little bit for, for those that are watching and, and maybe you don't know or like, man, I want some dreams from the Lord. What does that mean? Just talk about that, Cindy. You can go with it wherever you want to. Oh, God loves to talk to us while we sleep. And I think it's because it's the only time that we're truly, really quiet. Amen. Mind is working and all that. And uh, I love, I invite God all the time to talk to me in my dreams. Amen. And I think some of the most profound dreams, protection dreams, where he's showing me. One time I had a dream that I was trying to cross water and there were alligators that were lined in the path I was going to have to go in. Wow. And God warning me, you know, alligators normally mean that someone's gossiping or there's yeah. uh, bad things being said, someone's coming to 
bite at you. And, uh, and God had just given me a warning about it. And yeah. so I called up all my friends and said, pray, because God's been showing me this. But I love the way God just shows us stuff. In one of my dreams, he, he said, I'm going to give you $77 million. <laughs> <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. You know what was so funny? In the dream, I was like, I don't need $77 million. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and he was showing me that that uh, sometimes I had a hard time receiving Amen. what he was trying to give me. That's good. That's really well, God good. God heals us in our dreams. Amen. He protects us in our dreams. He also gives us vision for the future. So I love Amen. when I wake up, I'm like, ooh, what are you at? And I get dreams for other people too. Oh, I love I'm it. Dreams for people. And it's a lot of fun, don't you think? I love it. I love it. I'm the same as you, um, just talking about dreams. I've had warning dreams. I love impartation dreams. That's my oh. favorite. <laughs> That's just where somebody shows up and imparts to you a spiritual gift, like Paul talks about with Timothy. But um, <laughs> I even just, just to, I don't ever put God in a box. I think me and Cindy are a lot alike in that, in that way. It's like whatever Holy Spirit wants to do. But I've had inner healing in a dream. Like mm -hmm. a prophet showed up. I won't even say who it was because uh, it'd be well known. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm not boasting any one person, but they showed up in my dream and they said, I'm ripping out any part of you that was too painful to cry out. Okay. I was like, oh my God, Lord, thank you. <laughs> you know, breakthrough, That's you know, good. and uh, just I, there's transformation that talks about in the, in the glory. And, and before I even got on here with, with, uh, the Holy Spirit was just highlighting to me that you've had a lot of transformation in the glory. So if there's, okay. if there's anything particular that you want to share about that, that you're willing to share that maybe somebody needs to hear tonight, how, because the Bible says we go from glory to glory. Yes. And there's yes. something about in his presence is the fullness of joy, which allows the transformation to take place. You know, I think one of the biggest transformation I've had in the glory is knowing my identity. Amen. That's good. You know, in the glory of God, you, you, you get this whole new insurgence of who you are. Amen. And, and, and one thing I've, as, as being a pastor, being someone in, in ministry, women weren't always embraced. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of insecurity that I went through because people would be like, I mean, I would preach at my old church and there would be men who would not come because I was preaching. Wow. And, and the Bible think, says we're neither yeah. male nor female nor Greek, none of that. But yeah, go for it. <laughs> and, and so God really had to work with me in this mm -hmm. transform and realize that I am called to do this. Amen. And my identity is a shape to do this. Amen. So all of the, you know, the enemy wants to use even the people the very closest to you to try to dissuade you, discourage you, and keep you from stepping into the fullness of your identity. Mm. And when I was at my other church, you know, in a church family, you think everybody's going to love you and support you. <laughs> this and uh, I was an elder. I mean, I, you know, yeah. uh, I was a leader in the church, but it really hurt my feelings yeah. that the people I eat dinner with won't come to church when I preach. I didn't know how to reconcile that. It was wow. you know, very personal. And in yeah. that, really, God took me through a real process of just healing and being able to stand Amen. regardless of what everybody else thinks. And, and, and that's, I, that's that's a big part of what God does in his glory. I was going to say that. And that's a big thing because there's a lot of women. I know there's men on here, too. And we, we honor them. And we know you, yeah. have a, you have a different story. But a lot of women probably feel that way that are called to ministry so getting in the glory god was able to um, build your core system and be able to get your identity to where you will felt probably more free to minister period would you say absolutely and not only minister but but knowing that i'm ministering out of the call of god amen i'm ministering out who he formed me to be amen not what everybody else thought I should do. And that's a hard thing because, you know, we put pressure on each other to do what we think they yeah, should do. That's good. But it, that's probably been the biggest thing is really defining who I am, what I'm called to do, and being able to let go of all of the other things that don't agree with what God says. <laughs> that's good. So you're tearing down all the lies. I love that. All the lies. 
So even as we were speaking, um, Sarah Sanchez, I, I, um, the Lord just was giving me a download for you as we were talking. I could see that you're an intercessor, but I just seen like a new, whoa, I just impart that to you in mm -hmm. unity. We just declare over you a new, um, like a breaker anointing for intercession. So, Lord, we just declare that over Sarah right now. Just raise her sharp in your technique. And I almost see like a, a new anointing for strategy. So we just declare that, Sarah, if you're still on here in Jesus' name. Praise mm -hmm. God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. So we'll just take that. I know I just feel the glory building. We'll just take a minute. We just release the glory. If you've never felt the presence of God, I'll just let Cindy release it too. We just go for it, Cindy. We just release the glory over the atmosphere. I just see God, um, whoa, like just the pressures of this week. I feel stress going. I feel the pressures going. I see fear. We just break that spirit of fear off of you right now mm -hmm. and insecurity. I see the glory just pushing insecurity back right now in the name of Jesus. Anywhere where it's hindered you, it's like uh, what Cindy was talking about. Anywhere insecurity has just hovered over you, Lord. And I, I, I even feel that the healing anointing is showing up right now, right now. So, Cindy, if you get anything, just release it and we'll just flow together. Thank you, yeah. Holy Spirit. And I'm with you. I really feel like God wants to heal the soul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In order to make more room for the glory. So we Amen. just would what I What I see is that kind of a spirit of rejection that has just held mm -hmm. you down and and even kept you from stepping in because of the fear of what's going to come at you. So we just break that spirit. Yeah. Of just, we release the spirit of courage over that spirit Amen. of fear, acceptance of a rejection, Lord. We just don't agree with the enemy's uh, assignment to pull them back from full time. Uh, releasing the love of you everywhere they go in Jesus name. Yes. Amen. And Lord, I just come against any trauma. If there's people on here that that's watching and they've had trauma, whether it's been from abuse, whether it's been from molestation, whether it's been from divorce, if it's been from a betrayal, Lord, we just command that spirit of trauma off of you in the name of Jesus Christ, any PTSD or anxiety. We just command it off your nervous system right now in the name of Jesus. I even see trauma coming off for like surgeries. If you've had surgeries and they've operated on your body, we just command that off of you. We just release the love of the God and the safety of God. I just speak safety over your nervous system right now that you feel safe. And we did, we just command the cellular memory of that trauma off of your cells right now. Yes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, because what, what me, and, me and Cindy are talking about is, as you get more intimate with the Father and he starts healing your soul, it says he binds up the wounds of the brokenhearted. And so mm -hmm. what the Holy Spirit seems to really be wanting to do on this um, broadcast today is just allow the Holy Spirit to, to heal some of the past circumstances that has kept you from feeling the presence of God. So um, I feel like I could go here with you. So I'm just going to trust Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to trust the Spirit. Could you talk about fracturing or DID? Um, yeah. Just just share whatever you feel led to share. But I feel like Holy Spirit just wants to, to speak to somebody. Yeah. And, you know, part of the fracturing comes through trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In our life, what happens, especially as children, we be we, we do these little separate places within us to protect ourselves from what's coming against us. Amen. So I really just want to release that, that oneness inside, Lord. Uh, we just say where those traumas have brought the brokenness. God, what I keep seeing is, you know, he mends the brokenhearted. Amen. And, and, and when he mends them, they don't come together uh with, with brokenness still in them, they're mended. They're it's like a broken arm. When it's mended, it's completely well. Amen. So I want to release that mending. Amen. And the pulling together of all the broken pieces found within your soul, that it will come together as one, and that you will feel this sudden, uh, I, I want to see you sitting up straight because there's a sudden wholeness, this, this pulling together of who you are. So Lord, I'm just yeah. I'm just thanking you that you are the mender of the broken. 
that where the emotions have been torn apart and 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 the person who you are has had to be hidden in different ways. God, we're just calling you forth as one in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And really that mind uh, disease, you know, that goes with it as your mind begins to fragment with the breaking of your soul, God, we just call wholeness to it. Amen. That Amen. Uh, bipolar is healed now in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Healed now in the name of Jesus. We just come to these mind diseases, which Amen. Jesus has given us victory over by his blood. Amen. Thank you. Keep going Amen. for it. Amen. I agree. Really good. Thank you. Amen. So somebody says, I'm dealing with a, Trina says, I'm dealing with a lot of physical pain and can feel the devil pulling at me. Well, Lord, we and Cindy just come in agreement with, with faith mm -hmm. right now. And we just, we just curse any roots of trauma that could have opened up any affliction or infirmity in your body right now that could be attacking your body. We just command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. So we just say that the cellular memory is is coming out of those cells right now of all affliction and all pain. We just command that pain to, to go all the way down to a level of zero. I just yeah. see the Lord touching muscles right now, the muscular skeletal system. So if you have pain in your muscles right now, just receive this word Lord. we just come in unity. We release your healing anointing. Go for it. Just release your healing anointing and sometimes this freezes maybe 30 seconds every one and every broadcast has happened <laughs> once so don't worry about it we'll just keep flowing it'll take more than that we'll let holy ghost move but i just see him touching if you need um will we just declare new muscles from heaven lord that we we just declare creative miracles for those who need creative miracles in their muscle it's almost like i see like tissues actually needing to be repaired so we just release creative order in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And and we just want to go after the fullness of healing. You know, wherever there's pain, we know that uh, the enemy is the underlying issue of it. Amen. Doesn't mean that something didn't happen, but the enemy wants us to suffer. So Amen. we just, re Amen. we just rebuke the enemy. Amen. Where Amen. Someone was speaking and said that they felt like the enemy's after them. We have the power to rebuke the enemy. So we rebuke you enemy off that Amen. We release healing in their muscle. Yes. I see that legs are being healed. Amen. Even knees. You know, I, I almost see where there's like sports, where you've been like a big sports person, and that's cost you uh, mm -hmm. cartilages and your kneecaps being out of alignment. So we just release complete knee replacement without any surgery. Amen. We replace, we release brand new ligaments and yes. all. Amen. Uh, tissues and uh, the what do you call it? the cushioning stuff that goes in amen the so we just release that now to heal your body right now wherever it is in Jesus name yeah see him some touching somebody C1 through C7 mm -hmm. right now we just command that to be restored all the way aligned in the name of Jesus Christ like Cindy was saying the bones we just command the bones to shift yes right now in the name of Jesus. I even see backs like Cindy was seeing legs. I see backs right now just being in alignment. We just command the hips to shift where there's been back pain, your hips been out of alignment and then we just command it to shift back into creative order right now in the name of Jesus. Absolutely. Thank you. Holy I, saw back too. I saw backs being healed too, especially Amen. like at the top of the neck and then in the lower part of the back where the damage tends to happen, it's just like there are new pieces being placed in there. Amen. Um, I'm just going to trust you guys to test that out. Yeah. You know, sometimes when God releases healing, we have to go after what he's releasing. Right then and there. Yep. Say so that release, that healing is for me right now. So uh, as we release this healing, I want you to just wherever you need healing, Go after it and just declare the healing of your body everywhere. I also see someone struggling with maybe lumps in their breast or uh, mm -hmm. struggling with breast cancer. We've had, I forget, I think it's like 17 people healed. Praise from breast God. Cancer. Praise I want to God. That over you. Because once once we have breakthrough, Amen. we continually have breakthrough. Amen. So we're 
you've been healed, you can always release that to other people. Amen. And, and if you're feeling stuff as we're praying, just let us know. Like if you're feeling the pain go down or if you're feeling heat or, or the glory of God or the presence of God, just, just let us know because that, that helps us to keep pressing in and when we get feedback. And I've seen him touching thyroids. So right now there's inflammation. We just curse any inflammation declared out of your body. And we just declare right now that your thyroid, your TSH levels are in creative order right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. And if your thyroid is operating too fast, we just yeah. release calmness over it. And if it's acting sluggish, we, we uh, inject it with a fuel injector, the Holy Spirit Amen. to get it going again. Amen. You, you know, all of these incronin incron systems, we just call them back into order. Amen. Uh, whether it's, um, you know, oh gosh, I just lost uh, adrenal glands is what I was Amen. thinking of. That's good. I know. I always forget the name. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Tells you, isn't he great? Yeah. The adrenal fatigue. God, Amen. we just call them back in order and we release you know the anxiety of the world has tried to overtake our body so we just release yeah, the that's good. Jesus into that. that's good thank you lord. lord thank you lord and we might call out some more words of knowledge while we're speaking on here um yeah. i'm going to ask cindy a few more questions but if we if, give us any feedback if you felt if you were healed or if there's anything you um, need prayer for that we didn't call out so um, yeah. Cindy, just share with me some of the things that, uh, amen for thyroid healing, praise God. Just just share some of the things that prophetically God's just been speaking to you in this season that I, I just really feel like it's going to, I just see that the revelatory gift, you have a high revelatory gift, and that's what the Holy Spirit is showing me. So yeah. just kind of share um, for people that, you know, they're learning how to hear the voice of God. And they're like, what, what's God speaking to Cindy? Cause I'm pressing in and I'm not getting anything. And I, I really believe what you're, what you're going to release is going to impact them. Yeah. Uh, God has really been talking to me about taking the risk. Mm, that's it's good. Easier to be safe. Uh, we, <laughs> we had healing ones in our church for five years and that was my passion. I wanted everybody to get healed. And he told us that the last fall, this is too easy. The healing wounds are too easy. Mm -hmm. You're getting people healed. Now I want you to risk more. So he said, start having miracle services. Love it. Start having these revival experiments where we don't know <laughs> what's happening. He just shows up and, and, and he, and every single time it's different, but it really is about taking a risk for him. Amen. You know, the risk is worth whatever fear that goes with it. Cause there's a <laughs> group that come out of it. We've seen people healed. We had one of our guys that uh, he just fell on the ground face forward. I tell people, I don't usually catch forward. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he went completely out. And the Lord took him to four different countries wow. and renewed his passion for missions. Wow. I love it. And, uh, and he just said, yes. And that's what God is looking for. He's really looking for a yes. Amen. Uh, there is a huge financial shift that's happening. We are mm -hmm. seeing money just coming from everywhere. And we get testimonies all the time. When you release that financial, uh, then I got a new promotion. One guy got a promotion and he, uh, the Lord whispered in his ear, I want you to ask for $10,000 more. Wow. And wow. he was like, oh, no. <laughs> no he no, did. Really? He took the <laughs> And they said, absolutely. Oh, so oh, God's sorry. prepared a way for us to receive out of this risk. Amen. And we'll see more people healed, saved. We'll see our families come in just because we're willing to risk. Amen. So the risk, I think there's a huge financial pouring out that we've seen yeah. uh, all over the country. And yeah. uh, I mean, it's been, <laughs> we, we have been shocked what is happening, not just personal, but it's happening to everybody. Yeah. And there's this spirit of generosity. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Speak on that for a minute for anybody watching. Let's just say they've never sowed a seed. Nobody's ever taught them about it. Cause I, I love to sow. I, I just praise yeah. God. He taught me one step at a time. I went from tithe, you know, to seed to alms, but just, just speak on that. Cause I think it's so important. Just where you yeah. touched. 
really is. And you know, what God has been showing me, if we don't sow into what we're going after. Yeah, that's good. We're not invested in it. Yeah, that's good. We do uh, inner healing at our church. Mm -hmm. And we tell everybody, we, we have a suggested donation, but we tell everybody, even if you can just sow a dollar, there's something about sowing in to what you're going after. Amen. Come on. It more worth your while. You're going to want more if you've got an investment in it. Amen. So we've just seen this. And we've seen this generosity. Even while I was up in Minnesota with you, <laughs> I couldn't buy a meal or a cup of coffee. I tried so hard to buy food for <laughs> other, coffee for everybody else. And it was like this... Wow. When when God moves the way He's moving in in the signs that we've seen, the wonders, the He when He moves like this, the financial outpouring, Amen. what happens is with there's a spirit of generosity that comes with it. Amen. So we cannot help ourselves <laughs> wanting to help somebody else. Wow. It really is pretty exciting. <laughs> so that's what I feel like He's showing us: risk, go Amen. all. The uh, you know, we've got this financial outpouring that, that's available for everyone. And, and sewing comes with it. And then the spirit of generosity where, like I said, we cannot help. Amen. Give something to somebody. Yeah. So would you be willing to just kind of pray since you've had that, that financial breakthrough just over the people uh, watching, just, just whatever you feel led to, to just release and declare over them that they're, they're standing by and they, they need their car paid or they need grocery yeah. money or or whatever the Lord gives you. I'm just yeah, absolutely. I just, what I want to release is God has given us the ability to create wealth. Amen. That power. That's what the word says, Deuteronomy 8.18. And that power is within us. And we all have different levels that we're on, different abilities that we have. But, but the common theme is we have Jesus. Amen. And he is Amen. the provider. So whatever you need, just ask God to bring those groceries, bring them to your door and ask God to get that car repaired or have someone pay your car off if that's what you need. But ask God to provide that for you and then let him bring the path he's going to bring it. So many times we ask for something and we have it already all figured out in our mind yeah. how it's going to happen. That's good. So give Jesus freedom. Amen move on our behalf and I just want to release that financial breakthrough for you because yeah. we've seen in every family just a financial breakthrough yeah. and I'm going to release it over your businesses yeah. and over your households and over your children everything that you do will be bathed with the financial provision that you need in Jesus name amen I could feel the weight on that somebody's <laughs> somebody's asking prayer for tooth so we can just press into that because i can i can just so relate to uh you cindy we never if you don't risk I, I feel like the body of christ you're finding more people i mean what we're doing on here you can do it says lay your hands on the sick and they will recover you know you can go to the grocery store and you can pray for somebody and they can get healed just as well as us praying on here so I, I, I just confirm that is just what God's been speaking to me and my husband. He just had his first dental miracle. You can go to the page. And so <laughs> we just say more, Lord. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, a gold tooth. And we've seen it with other ministers. It was the first breakthrough for us in, in, in that area. Because I know people do need dental miracles sometimes. And, and sometimes God just does it because he loves them. And he wants to touch them and give them a new level of wisdom. So we just come together in unity. We pray for any tooth in your pain, uh, tooth pain right now. We just command that off your tooth. We just take authority. And Lord, if, if Holy Spirit, if you want to touch them, if you want to do a dental miracle, Lord, we just declare it forth in Jesus' yeah. name. Yeah, and I just kept hearing gums healed. Amen. You know, I just feel like there's like gingivitis or something. Yeah, that, are, that requires surgery. And we're just asking Amen. them that those gums are going to go back up. Uh, they're going to ascend to the right area of the tooth they should be so they won't have to have surgery Amen. and they won't go through all that pain. So yes, just agree with those dental miracles, even teeth being straightened. Amen. Just just the realignment of the teeth so Amen. they'll be straight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the power Amen. of agreement. There's, there's people on here and you, you've been praying so just understand that 
as a brother and sister in Christ, the word says, when two or more gather, it shall be done. So I just want to increase your faith. We're on here agreeing for you. So just receive as we're calling out these words. Just receive, test it out. Do something you couldn't do before. If it hurt before, like touch your mouth. If you couldn't bend over before, bend over. If you if you couldn't jump up and down, jump up and down because it activates your faith. And I've just seen God do, like I'm sure Cindy has too, just just move. There's no time and distance in the spirit. And we're calling these out. The Holy Spirit is, is wanting. He loves you. I always, I always love to share Cindy. I, I'm sure you've, you've dealt with this before in the word. People have struggled um, and said, um, how do I know healing's for me? And one of the things I like to say, and then I'll, then I'll let you share whatever you feel the Holy Spirit say, is where in the Bible did Jesus touch somebody in hand sickness? Yeah. Where did he hand sickness? It's just not biblical. Everywhere he went, he healed. He didn't say... Um, metal feelings gone. So will we just declare those feelings to be filled with gold, to be filled repaired if they're if they're broken and busted? We just say new teeth, whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit, just touch your mouth. But um, what have you kind of in the healing process and miraculous? What are some things maybe you could share to, to people on here that that maybe they're they're having to re wire to be able to receive some of the teaching they've heard, some of the the misunderstandings maybe they've been taught. One of the biggest misunderstandings is that God gave them what they have in order to bring him glory. Amen. And, and there is nowhere in scripture, you know, yep. Jesus died. It, it's by his stripes we are healed. It says that in Isaiah. Amen. says Peter. So if he gave his whole body and, and endured a beating so we could be healed, Amen. then he healed for everybody. So that and, doesn't use, uh, like cancer to teach you a lesson that's just no. not the father <laughs> i've no. heard that one yeah yeah so somebody uh trainers on here said i've I'm been doing physical baby steps to walk and i just got out and walked normal strides without pinching pain praise god <laughs> so we just say more lord we just say was more say yeah we just say let the glory let the glory go through your nerve Maybe, let's just dump the presence on her i just see yeah. like the glory forming around her Cindy, so just just release. We just release it together in unity. We just yes. say, let your let your presence just wash over her right now. Yes. Right now, there's a lot of people on here that need dental miracles. <laughs> oh, well, came to the right place. Amen. Tooth pain is gone. Praise God. We just say Wait. more, Lord. More, Lord. Lord. Yes, yes. We're just saying that. You know, she is going to, you're not only going to walk in these baby steps, but Amen. you're going to be able Amen. to run again. Amen. And the Amen. fullness of, of, of whole and wholeness and healing that God has for you. Amen. So I just feel led to go here, Cindy, and see what you think. Okay. How does the soul, just speak about how the soul affects your health. Oh, I, I've done a lot of study on this because I read an article that said 73 to 95% of sickness comes from uh, uh, negative words, mm -hmm. from a negative mindset. And I'm like, that cannot be true. But it was a Harvard medical study. Wow. Powerful. So you're using a whole nother, but there, there's this whole understanding in the scientific community that when you say something negative about yourself, it releases neurons that look dead. Wow. Dead neurons attached to your body. Wow. And they sickness. When you release positive words about yourself, that's the reason we say declare. Yeah. Declare that's you good. are the whole. Then what happens is they're released. When they're released, they look like giant trees. They're alive. Mm -hmm. And and so they're attached to you and they bring life. So the the power of our mental ability to understand the richness of who we are makes a difference in whether we're sick or whether we're healthy. Amen. And we have this whole enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy us. But the battle, our warfare is, is in the mind. It's, it's like we, what Jesus says, that by his stripes I'm healed. So I, I'm going to contend for that until the full healness breaks through. 
Yeah, we just declare breakthrough over you guys' this life. Everybody is standing for full healing. We just declare, Lord, in unity. Just let the glory wash over them, the presence of God. And, Lord, if there's people, I woke up in the presence like two nights ago. I mean, sometimes you just wake up and it's there. And you love it because you're not praying, you're not doing anything. And so I just impart that, Lord, we just say, let that glory wake somebody up this week. I mean, I didn't want to move. It's like my father's here, you know, <laughs> just, I mean, it's just a way. And when we're talking about glory, we're talking about the presence of God. It's just allowing him to love on you, to love yeah. the brokenness out, to, to, to physically heal you. You know, I've had times where, like I shared in my book, I have a testimony where I had um, debilitating fibromyalgia. It's called Gateway to the Miraculous, my miracle. And um, I was bedridden and my pain level was a 10. I mean, I had it. I mean, it was just God awful. I only, I just don't even want to, I mean, just shots, steroid shots, you name it. I tried everything. And I had to, in the book, I, I just tear down the lies of like what we've been talking about tonight. Yeah. And um, in the process of, of, of people, you know, somebody prayed for me and I was healed instantly and it never came back. But there's other times where I was just in the glory, just with the Father alone, just in his presence where God would touch me himself. Jesus would just touch me. And then I had a miracle. <laughs> so I just want to say on here, too, you know, if, you, if you're in need of, of, of something we haven't called out, we just declare healing over it. But if, you're, if it's something internal we haven't called out and we're talking about cultivating the glory, God can use us. But God can also want, he wants to touch maybe some of those inner healing places that are really deep that, that God started tonight. But maybe as you cultivate, like me and Cindy was talking about, as you were cultivating the glory and you were doing what Cindy said and, and meditating on the word. And, and what would you say to somebody on here? I'm kind of picking this up, that they didn't have a good father relationship. Maybe they're a little scared to talk to God or are scared to be real with God. They just had a negative experience with their dad. And that, I mean, that had problems. My dad was an awesome dad, but he was, uh, he had a hot temper. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it, was, it was really, really good. When it was bad, it was really good. <laughs> and it took me a while to, mm. to realize that the father of heaven mm. is not my dad. Yeah. And yeah. what I had to go through is really a process of just continuing to ask the father, Father, is there a lie I'm believing about you? That's good. And, yeah. and you know, one of the lies was that if I do something wrong, you're going to be angry and, and, you know, distant from me. And so you just have to renounce those lies. I renounce the lie that the Father's yeah. angry and distant. And, you know, Father, tell me the truth. And he will. He will walk you through this. It's mm -hmm. so weird. I've been doing this for a long <laughs> time. And last fall, mm -hmm. he took me through this process of 38 lies I was believing about oh, all every little tiny thing. That's powerful. You know, those are the little tiny mm -hmm. things that keep us from moving forward. The those little foxes. Are, yeah, they're That's toxic. That's good. That's really you good. Know, like 38, I was like, wow. God, I thought I was in a little better shape. And he, he, he's like, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Wow. Well, you know, a lot of them were taught to me. Wow. So culture mm -hmm. teaches us things that we don't even realize are, are deep down inside of us and the father wants to get those out Amen. so you but you can ask him at any time father is there a lie i'm believing about you Come and on. he tell you and when it comes to your mind you just renounce it because you know it's not the truth and then just say father what's the truth and he will tell you and whenever i have something buzzing around i'll say father is there a lie i'm believing about this mm -hmm. and he will tell me right away that's uh, good I think that's a powerful thing tool it's simple yeah. and anybody can do it i love that strategy because it's a stronghold that she's talking about she's pulling them down and the lord set you free as you asked him and that's that relationship that's the relationship with the father and i loved that you were willing to share that because we all need to ask the father what lie am i believing whether it's a lie about your kids or a lie about yourself or a lie about your marriage or a lie about your health just say god what am I believing that's wrong? You know, yes. I received my healing. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to beg for it. God doesn't have to be in a good mood to heal you. Yeah. That's some of the things that, you know, I had to process through all this wrong teaching, like what Cindy was talking about. And I, I'm sure 
during that transformation, I just want to encourage people, like you said, Cindy, uh, the Lord said 38 lies, that he reframed your mind. How has that impacted your life now that you look back, that you took I, that time? Well, you know what I think it, it did the most is there was a freedom that I walk mm -hmm. in that I didn't have before. Amen. You know, when you do things that aren't true. That's good. They, they hold you back mm -hmm. as I let them go. And it was just in one day. Then all of a sudden, there was this new freedom. I was like, <laughs> woo! <-hoo! laughs> Even though I was carrying it. Amen. That's you know, good. I didn't carry anything that was holding me back. So it's really fascinating how God does it. Amen. I'm writing down a few words of knowledge because Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I, I felt abandonment. Somebody on here, it's a generational curse of abandonment. So if, if you've been abandoned, and even as I'm sharing this, you might feel like tears coming up in your eyes. Just just do a repeat after me, because I want to teach people how to, to break generational curses. Yes, Christ died on the cross to give you generational blessings, but sometimes we have to enforce that victory. So just, you know, you're, it, it could be, like the Bible says, to send the Father, you know, passed down to the third or fourth generation. So just say, I repent for anybody in my bloodline, maybe my dad, my grandfather, who just abandoned you know, maybe their wife, their spouse, just say, I repent for abandonment being in my bloodline. I just stand in the gap for me, myself, and my descendants. And I just uh, break any generational curse of abandonment in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. Yeah. I just declare right now in the name of Jesus, just command every demon of abandonment that's entrapped you off and the orphan spirit with it. We just command it out in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just come together in unity. We release the spirit of adoption, the spirit of love, the experience of acceptance. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just see the Lord kind of doing open heart surgery on somebody right now that was dealing with abandonment. Just let the Father love on you right now. Just let his presence, just yes. let his presence touch you. And um, if you've got anything to add to that, Cindy, go for it. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, in Ephesians, it talks about how we are, uh, we are purposed in that adoption and we're mm -hmm. part of the family. So I just want to release that, that feeling of a family. Amen. That's good. And how God sees you as his own and that mm -hmm. he is, and is devoted to you. And regardless of what happened to you, he wants to bring wholeness into the family. Amen. So come Amen. Yeah, we call you family. We bless you in that. We just call you in the family, Lord. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And I even felt um, a word of knowledge for autism. I don't know why this is coming up, but Lord, we, we come together in unity and we just strike the ground to see breakthrough in that. We just declare a creative miracle that that, that person be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we just declare the breaker anointing will fall. If you're watching and you have a loved one that has autism, we just declare the sound mind, the sound nervous system. We just declare who the sun sets free is free indeed. And and maybe one of the scriptures you, you can add. Um, I know there was a time and season where I was on medicine for a short time in my life. And God had me eat the word four times a day every time I took that medicine. And maybe you need to just speak anytime your your child has something that um, that that's hurting them, bothering them during this season. I just really see a breakthrough coming. Just speak the words. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. And put your child's name there. Just, just uh, allow the Holy Spirit to to touch that in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, Holy Spirit. Thank and you. I just want to speak a few different things. Uh, First of all, I have communion every single day. Amen. Yes. That's good. Amen. We're, we're agreeing with Jesus about his body and his blood. Amen. They bring healing. They bring clarity. It brings uh, just direction, identity. It just, it, it really brings so much more. So I have communion every day. So consider doing that. Mm. The other thing is, is for those of you who have suffered for a long time and waited on healing, mm. It. I just want to encourage you uh, to not give up. Amen. Not give up. Uh, you know, just like we were talking about, I've been healed of lots of different things. I was on a, I had migraines my whole life, and I was on an airplane going to South Africa, and 
I started getting a migraine a few wow. years ago. I told the Lord, I said, I can't do this. I mean, I would go to bed for a couple of days. Wow. I would take the code and do, take the pain away. I said, I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, right then, he healed him, and I haven't had one in three years. Praise God. I had for a long time, just like you were talking about, yeah. about being in bed. You know, we just have to continue to go after until we have the breakthrough. Yeah, don't back down. And and I just see there's somebody on here. Their daughter, Joy, is 12, who has autism. I'm telling you, I feel the breaker tonight for this. So just put your hand on Joy if she's next to you. And me and uh, Cindy will come together in unity. I just really feel the breaker anointing. And uh, we just want to declare that together. For joy right now Lord, we just declare in unity just put, just put your hands on your daughter if you can Lord, we just release that breaker anointing in the name of Jesus Christ we just declare who the Sun sets free is free indeed right now we just thank you Lord that you're touching joy we just call joy free together in unity we just call mm -hmm. sound mind we yes. just command wholeness to her nervous system Woo. We command all fear off of her in the name of Jesus Christ. All fear, any torment, we just command it off of her in unity in the name of Jesus Christ. We just speak to every electrode in her body to fire how it's supposed to fire right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We just release the glory over joy and unity. We just come together in unity. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and we just declare unity between the body and the mind. Yeah, that's good. The healing of the mind, the healing of all the synapses, all of that, and the body to come into alignment with it. In Jesus' name. Jesus. That her spirit Jesus. rises up, her soul follows, and her body comes behind that. Also, what I kept seeing for Joy was um, I saw the glory of, of the Lord in coming her bedroom while she is the presence the glory Amen. just going all around her bed underneath it's like she's encapsulated Amen. I can just see that so clearly yeah just pray some worship if you if she will tolerate it play some worship in there at night if if she or even headsets if she likes those better Maybe while she sleeps and just like Cindy was saying, let the glory just the angels yeah. minister. Because when we worship, the angels show up. <laughs> That's the best part, you know. <laughs> I, I just I just love that that strategy. When I went to Africa, Cindy, I, I'm a I walk in discerning of spirits, and you're probably familiar with that. And some people <laughs> discern differently. So one of the strategies the Lord gave me was to worship as I walk through Africa. Just worship. Yeah. But I was just walking through the towns as we were doing street ministry and just worshiping. And I was like, man, God, your glory, it just, his glory goes with us everywhere we go. Absolutely. Everywhere no, we go. No matter where we go, there are people just like us hungering for more of God. Amen. But no matter what, you know, like I just went to Africa too. Uh, and wow. no matter who I encountered, there are people around me with that hunger of I want to encounter the living God. Amen. What, which part of Africa did you go? I went to Zambia. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah we went yeah. to Kenya. It was awesome. And now now the team's gone to Malawi. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So we'll see where the, the Lord uh, leads us next. Right, Cindy? <laughs> I know. I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like it's a wide open Amen. arena. Amen. Amen. Just the places I want to go. Amen. Amen. I'm just waiting to see if we get any more response of, of anything before we get off of here. I'm just going to have uh, me and Cindy are going to impart. If, if Cindy's comfortable with that, we'll just impart whatever spiritual gifts we have to just equip you and um, just receive it. I'm just waiting. If you if you feel any more healings or, or heat or you got up and tested your neck where I was talking about the neck, just let us know before we get off of here, before we impart. And I always want to give you a chance to sew at the end of this. I'll share me and Cindy's um, PayPal. It's not for us, but if you've had a breakthrough and, and this is uh, allowing you to sew into the kingdom, like what Cindy was said, it's generosity and, and sew where you want to go. So there's something that God did and really touched you. No pressure from us, but if you feel led, a lot of people have asked me after I log out. So we're just going to post it. And if you want to 
do whatever Holy Spirit says. It's totally up to you and Holy Spirit. But I just want to make sure if there's anybody that the pain's decreased, if there's any dental miracles, I've seen tooth, was gone, tooth pain was gone. If there's anything else that we overlooked or you want prayer before we get off of here, real quick, me and Cindy will, will just pray a blessing over you and just impart to you. Because I, I, I know she carries that equipper anointing too. <laughs> That's her heart. I just love it. But I just want to thank you, Cindy, too, for being on here. It's just a, an honor to, to co-labor with you for the kingdom. So, oh, absolutely. I loved it. And I love just this new partnership that we've got and friendship. I'm, I'm going to see where it's going to take us. Amen. Amen. And, and, and keep us updated. You know, if, if you have a breakthrough with autism, just message me or Cindy. And and um, we're just excited to share any testimonies of Jesus. You know, you could just type us or message us it'd be awesome so i don't see any more comments cindy so i'll just um pray and impart and then you pray and impart whatever you feel okay. led and then we'll um let everybody in enjoy the rest of their evening so or we just thank you for this time i just thank you that you seal it we thank you for the breakthroughs that here i just want to give jesus and all the honor all the praise the holy spirit we just thank you for touching these individuals the people that got healed on here tonight and the people that, that maybe your miracle wasn't instantly, but it's changing, just keep pressing, just keep believing, don't back down. And, and I just, even, I even see somebody's, you're really crying out for wisdom. And even as I, and the prophetic anointing is starting to flow, I just see the Lord touching people with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You're just crying out. I want more revelation on healing. I want more wisdom with how to handle my finances, like, like what Cindy was talking and in part. And I see that God's going to do it. I just see him moving. So if that's you, just say, yes, I receive more of the spirit of revelation and knowledge, especially in the area of healing. I really see him. Oh, you're welcome. Andrea said, thank you. But that's Joy's mom. God bless you both and love you lots. That's awesome. Just keep us updated. I agree with Cindy that that, that thing's taking place. We just thank you for that breakthrough. But if you were on here and you need a healing, I see a lot of people are just now logging on. Um, go pack and play the replay. We called out some words of knowledge and some were live and some were not. But Lord, I just bless everybody that's been on here. Lord, I just impart whatever I carry that they need for their kingdom assignment. Ooh. I just release it over them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We just bless them. We just bless them. I just thank you, Lord, for their hunger. I just feel their hunger right now. So I just thank you, Lord. You fill them with your righteousness. It's yes. so beautiful. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And I feel like there's a couple things specific the Lord wants me to impart. Yeah. It yeah. is that prophetic anointing. And it's more, it's to call the uh, nations. It's a prophetic anointing for the nations. Amen. Also, an anointing to really be able to see the brokenness of the hearts Amen. and be able to bring healing to that. Just an anointing Amen. to see the, the wounding and the trauma and being able to bring healing. And then uh, the other part of it is I feel like that God wants to release joy. Mm. Amen. Yeah, really go for it. Joy for people, and then they are just filled with that bubbling up of the spirit in them, and they just can't help themselves but be contagiously <laughs> joyful. Amen. So it around them, and for those who want to be a writer, let's just agree together that yeah. we're really yeah. that anointing That's to good. write. God yeah. wants your story out there. You are Amen. making three for Him, and as we share our stories, and more people can read them, it just builds our faith and it builds the kingdom. So we just release that ability to write. Amen. And God, thank you for everyone who's going to listen and everyone who's listening now. And we come together in agreement as, as your kingdom is moving forward. And we're part of the, uh, I feel like I want to keep seeing we're part of yeah, yeah. the, we are bulldozers and we are moving the kingdom forward. And we don't care what the enemy has planned because the power of God has been released on us, through us, and to us to break down every stronghold that has been set up against us. So we call for all of the kingdom people to rise as one and shift and move our country, our world for the kingdom of God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Bulldozers for Jesus. Amen. I, I felt such an anointing on that. Praise God. So
And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God and ask him to help you cultivate his presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of. 